the MMA Discussion Podcast. Me and Chris Shumana will be doing today's podcast, episode number six. Chris, what's up? Hey, guys. Oh, a lot to talk about. First of all, we had a fight card on Wednesday. Today is Saturday morning, Rise and Shine, people. If you watched it, Tough Nations finale. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of mixed reviews about this card. I honestly thought it was a great card. I thought the prelims were good. I thought the main card was good. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, for some reason, everybody else has a different type of opinion. What did you think about it, Chris? Um, overall, I thought the card was great. I think the main gripe that people have with the card was... Um... <laughs> Was the main event Bisping versus Kennedy being a little boring, um, or I guess in some people's eyes, really boring because no one got finished? But I mean, for me, I'm, I'm not really one of those people that needs to see a finish every fight. Um, Kennedy shocked me. Um, I did not think he'd be able to control Bisping like that. I thought Bisping was going to be able to out strike him, but Kennedy showed me wrong. Um, with this fight, I believe Kennedy landed top six. So who knows, maybe a Rockhold rematch or, yeah, another Rockhold fight can be lined up. Uh, Kote Noak, I, I really like that fight. That was pretty fun. Um, I liked both the final uh, the finalist fights. Those are both great. Poirier, Corisani. Corisani looked actually a lot better than I gave him credit for. Yeah, he much. actually like, started that fight off really well. Yeah, I was surprised. I was as soon as he rocked him, I was like, "Whoa, no fucking way!" Like, if he finishes him, that's because he wasn't even top fifteen. But I think at least with this fight, you gotta give him respect for. They even said during that he had three options, and he went with the guy that was in the top. What was he like top eight easily? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went with that option, and he rocked him. He got finished, but there's no shame in that. I mean, Poirier is a beast. And the prelims were amazing. I mean, I mean, the funniest part for me was when uh, Nunes knocked out Stout clean, and then Stout partially regains his <laughs> conscious, and then and goes for the guillotine on Eves Levine and actually gets the tap too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that yeah, the submission on the ref was hilarious. I don't think it was Eves Levine, but it was like some new ref that I hadn't seen before. But the ref proceeded to just say, "Get the fuck off me," and then just shoved him into the cage. <laughs> And then he was like, oh, shit, okay. Whoa. He couldn't even stand afterwards. No, I mean, yeah, that's he how was hard just the out, was. yeah. He was out. KJ yeah. getting performance of the night. I believe Ryan Dremel also got it. And Dustin Poirier and Akira Corsani got fight of the night. Well deserved. <laughs> um, uh, good seat, good card overall. I mean, the Sarah Kaufman, Leslie Smith fight was great. The George Roop uh, came and performed really well. Um, Ryan Dremel got an awesome KO knockout first round. Uh, over a guy who uh, he should have he should have looked good on. So let's play matchmaker here a little bit, at least with the main card. Dustin Poirier, who do you think ne who do you think's next for that guy? Um, looking really quick, he is ranked. I know, of course, he's ranked top he's number six. <laughs> okay, he's six. Now, before I match him up with anyone, I want to see who's actually available for him to fight. Dennis Bermudez. That'd be a great. Fight. I like that um, one, Dennis Bermudez, man. I mean, that, I, 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 for anybody that, that, that knows me, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Dennis, and so, and I feel like he's due for a top fight. Uh, I think Dennis makes the most sense. He's number ten now. Uh, I, I would love to see that fight. I would love to see it just because it's a good fight for Poirier. Not only is it a fight that makes sense for Poirier, it's a fight that makes sense for Bermudez more than anything as well because he's won six uh, straight fights. He's looked amazing. Uh, since uh, since his very first fight where he lost to uh, Diego Brandao, but since then has reeled off these six straight, four of which have been four, three or four of which have been finishes, and uh, he's just looked all around amazing. So I, I expect uh, that if uh, I, I think that if anybody could face Poirier right now that's open, it's Bermudez. I mean, either that or Clay Guida, but even that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, like I said uh, that in the last podcast, Clay Guida and Connor made sense. If they weren't to make that fight, I could. I would be okay with Clay Guida, uh, but I want to see Bermudez get that fight. That'd be awesome. I really like that fight, too. I mean, Bermudez has pretty much done nothing but put on finishes and um, fight the night performances. He's always looked great. Yes. Uh, if he didn't go with Bermudez, though, and Poirier wants to make a case for the title or at least move up in the rankings, I could see him and Ricardo Lamas fighting. That would be good. That would be really yeah. good. I would actually like that one. Ah, that's right, because Lamas doesn't have a dance partner just yet. Um, 
I don't know if he has like any injuries or anything, uh, but uh, I don't think so. Okay. Well, yeah. See, that that fight makes sense to me. I'd be excited for it still, no matter what. Um, what else? Who else? Ah, uh, who else fought? <laughs> I can't remember. Oh yeah, Chad Lepree and Ilya Teodoro, the two uh, first ever Canadian fighters to ever win the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, I, first off, I'll say this, uh, Ilias Theodoro, out of all four of those guys that made it to the finals, looked the most impressive. Uh, not only that, he's got an awesome set of hair. <laughs> uh, um, not only that, I mean, he just showed great striking game, good defense, good, uh, good cardio. Uh, Chad Lepree, um, looked really well, looked really decent as well. He had a tough opponent, a guy who trains at TriStar, Olivier Abinus. Uh, Abin Mircier. God, I don't speak Canadian, so I don't know how to say all this shit. <laughs> but uh, Chad Lepre, Elias Theodoro, uh, generally the rule is for tough fighters that, that come off winning, they generally tend to get, you know, up-and-coming guys or, you know, guys that have been around a while to where any fight could really kick them off the pack. You know what I mean? Um, so... With that being said, I think uh, the Chad, the disciple, could uh, make a good case fighting any any uh, any newcomer dudes. Even even maybe like say Cr Bahadur Zada. I mean he's one and two right now, so that kind of fight makes sense for him. As far as welterweight, Chad Lepree is the welterweight winner of it. Or maybe or maybe Neil Magny, somebody else off the tough uh, season. Um, who else? And plus, I mean, who knows if these guys want to cut weight or not. If that was That's correct. Uh, I forgot. Like at the end, uh, he was asked if he was going to drop down to one fifty five. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. He said he was going to drop to light. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know who they would fight. I can't really call for who those two would fight. They're so new, and uh, and I didn't watch every. Se- I didn't watch uh, any of Chad's or uh, uh, Theodoro's fights, um, yeah. but I did watch Chad's. And uh, so Chad, for me, it makes sense to, to put him against uh, someone maybe like uh, Justin Edwards, you know, or somebody. Oh, I like Justin Edwards. That'd be a good fight. Yeah, I mean, Justin Edwards is, is, is a good fighter, although it hasn't looked impressive. He's 2-4 and four right now in the UFC. Could definitely use a win himself. So yeah. you never know. I don't know who they'll pit the Canadian winners uh, against, but uh, whatever the UFC decides to do, generally the rule is that they fight guys like that who are who are either having some trouble or getting traction or on a losing streak or maybe they're new. Uh, generally, that's the rule. So we'll move on to Patrick Cote. Huh? What do you do with this guy at welterweight? The coach, the Canadian coach of the Ultimate Fighter, the Canadian coach of the Ultimate Fighter. Hmm. Hmm. He actually did look fairly impressive against Noak. Nope. Even Noak nope did. I mean, Noak nope put up a good fight. Yeah. To 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 me, he even won the second round. Kyle, I felt won the second round. He hurt. He hurt Cote with like a huge, like a straight on knee to the dome, like like that spam knee that you do on the UFC three game. You just put it up there and it just phew, hit him right square in the face. <laughs> was, <laughs> I thought it was a, a, a entertaining fight. My I felt. Um, and he could not have sounded more like George St. Pierre at the end of that fight, huh? If you listen to that, I was like, man, did he just steal his vocal cords? It was so funny. <laughs> Who does he fight at welterweight? Uh, look at the roster. I I like this Amagov guy. I haven't seen him fight in a while. But uh, Amagov has been calling for fights. So I think him versus Amagov will be a great fight. Um, Maybe if Akiyama wants to come back soon enough. I haven't seen him in forever, but <laughs> if he wants to come back soon, I think that'd be a great fight. Just with the Brandon way both Thatch. guys. Brandon Thatch. Mm. You don't think that's? Uh, I like that fight. I do. I, I do mean. too. Uh, it just seems like an odd fight to make, but actually, I really do like that Brandon Thatch. Last fight was against Paul Tiago, correct? Yes, he's two and he all thus far. Great. Two finishes. Yeah, eleven and one. He's doing pretty yeah. good. He looked really good with that knee of the body. He actually made him tap to that knee of the body. He was like, oh, shit, make it look. He sniped him right there, which is pa. That makes sense. Brandon Thatch makes sense. Um, hmm. Hmm. Looking at the list of welterweights here, trying to make a good matchup for myself, because I'm just doing, we're doing this right off the top of our heads here. Yeah. I think... Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know where John Hathaway is on anybody's radar, but that's another good fight. Him versus Noak, I think that'd be good. Uh, ha- Hathaway versus Noak? Yeah, I could. Yeah. So, yeah. Paulo Tiago, even, for for Cote, I mean. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, Maybe even uh, Rick Story. Rick Story. Yeah, oh, yeah. Rick Story. Uh, a bunch of good fights. I actually like the Brandon Thatch one more than anything. It helps Brandon Thatch more, uh, obviously. Um, yeah, actually, but, I like that one the best. Against, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it makes the most sense because Patrick's coming off a win, trying to uh, uh, off looking uh, coming off a camp where he looked tremendous the whole time. He got the victory. It showed off that it paid off. Um, so I think uh, Patrick Cote versus a very hot up and comer like Brandon Thatch makes sense. Brandon Thatch, uh, after his last fight, said he was going to get some injuries taken care of. That was in I believe November. So. Yeah, it's been a while since he fought. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, hopefully he's due to come back sometime soon. I like that one. Brandon Cote. Or Brandon Cote. Brandon Thatch versus Patrick Cote. Um, uh, what do you think? Overall, um, if you had to pick a fight. With that one, though, I actually like the best one. Thatch versus Cote. Yeah. With Noak. Uh, what was the one I said earlier? I think... Um, Noak and Story. Or no, Hathaway. No can Hathaway, yeah, that that would be the best one. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm agree with that. Cool deal. Next one, Tim Kennedy. And now let me give my opinion on this fight. I thought, um, I thought this fight was fairly entertaining, but maybe due to the fact that whenever I see Bisping getting his ass kicked, I, I kind of tend to cheer. Every punch, I was like, yes. And you hear like three dudes yelling in the back, and me and Zach were talking at the same time while watching this fight, and Zach's just like. Oh, shut the fuck up, you fucking... Whatever they were, I mean, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was hilarious because they were the only three guys going for Mike in the entire arena. <laughs> and you could just hear those three dudes booing. And it was just funny. I thought it was an entertaining fight, though. I mean, you never seen a guy... I mean, it's not like... Ken- I mean, Kennedy only had one instance where he got stood up the entire fight out of five rounds. That mean, and it's because he kept finding the mount and putting uh, and putting a beat down. I mean, laying and praying is like laying in the guard or laying in half guard or something. But he kept looking for the for the advantageous position to choke him out or put a put a beating on him, and he did. He would find the mount. He would put down shots on him. He showed a a tremendously uh, uh, excellent game plan, especially when it came to the striking as well. I mean, he was able to find his hands right. He was he was doing a great job striking with a guy who everybody thought uh, if he tried to strike with Michael he'd lose that fight, and he didn't. He actually landed great shots of his own. I mean he won that fight basically everywhere, and uh, I he thought he bad too. He actually nearly finished him in one of the rounds. Yeah, exactly. I mean he was he was doing he was putting him he was putting it on him. I thought Kennedy couldn't have looked any better. Uh, it was easily Kennedy's biggest win. And uh, now he's uh, at rank number six in the UFC right now. So that 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 one that win did a lot for him. And uh, and I think uh, if you look at the top ten, he called out Mark Munoz, which is weird because now he's ranked above him. Maybe he doesn't know that yet, but um, he called out Mark Munoz following the fight. A, a rematch with Luke Rockhold though does sound like the uh, does sound like it would make the most sense. I actually like that fight. Um, but if you fought Mark Munoz, it, it would make sense too, as long as you put it like on a pay per view. You know what I mean? You start building Tim up. At this yeah, point. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thoroughly impressed with Kennedy. I did not see that happening at all. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as who I match him up with, I mean, I was thinking more so Bisping Munoz, Kennedy Rockhold. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. I like that one. Bisping and or yeah, Bisping and Munoz were supposed to fight a long time ago. Man. November, I believe. That's when Machida stepped up. But yeah, and so I, I like the idea of that fight, Mark Munoz and and, and Bisping. So uh, uh, make that fight happen. I like it. And then Kennedy, I think uh, he's due for a shot. Rockhold doesn't have an opponent yet, does he? I don't think he does. Yeah, does Jacare? I mean, like I'm I'm not saying I'm interested in seeing Kennedy. Jo- Wait, Kennedy and Jacare fought once, or they fought twice? Kennedy and Jacare fought once. He's also only fought once with uh, Rockhold once. Okay. Is Jacare matched up with anyone? Not that I know of. Let's see. That could be another one, but I would actually be interested in Jacare, maybe uh, Belfort down the line. I think that'd be a good one. Yeah. Face combat. So right now, yep. I mean, personally, Rock Cole Kennedy, Bisping Munoz would be my pick. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, Jacare... Uh... 
man. Uh, I mean, oh, he, wait, wait. You know what I forgot? Munoz versus uh, Musasi's lined up. Wow, well, that's correct. That is right. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, Kennedy maybe versus the winner of that, Musasi and Munoz. No, I'm still sticking with Luke Rockhold versus Kennedy. Uh, but yeah, Bisbeck versus the winner with that. I think that'd be good. I just think that Rockhold and Jockery should fight next. That's really oh. why. That's really why I'm trying to shy away from that one. Because if Luke Holt, Rockhold, Rockhold and Souza don't have a fight lined up, and and they, and people have been calling for that rematch ever since the last fight because it was a very close contested fight, very yeah. debatable on who won, and so I, I'd definitely be interested in that fight. But for Tim Kennedy, uh, you know, I mean, he's he's definitely got some good leverage. I mean, he's three and zero in the UFC now, with uh. You know, with at least two very good performances. I mean, he he was able to handle his own with Roger Gracie on the ground. He knocked out Hafe on the towel, and he was able to out grapple Michael Bisping, which not many guys have been able to do. And uh, able to do. And um, so, and finally, he's lost to a guy to where he can't complain about TRT. So, so happy <laughs> about that. <laughs> so, uh, I think um, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that one. Uh, Bisping and uh, who do you want to stick Bisping with? Maybe even Bisping Karma. That'd be a good one. I mean, if Bisping wants to stay, you know, especially relevant and uh, especially uh, hyped with at least the guy, because he dropped three spots. That's a huge drop, man. It's because he lost to a guy ranked quite lower than him. Yeah. Um, I thought it was odd to put Munoz above Bisping though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, hmm. I mean, I I, I think it makes sense strictly because Munoz. What, what was Munoz's last fight? Lost to Machida. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the rankings work. Maybe if he was put just above Munoz, well, then he'd be right under Tim Kennedy, which would yeah, make sense. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think he needed to plummet that many shots down. I mean, he dropped three slots, losing to a guy that you know. Uh, even though he's ranked so lower than him, it shouldn't diminish him from all these other fighters that have their own kind of thing going on in the division. But, yeah, um, exactly. He was tied for fifth with Rockhold. Was he? <laughs> and yeah. Talos Ladies broke into the top 15. That's impressive, at least. Yeah, he's been looking great ever since he came back in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he had two, one, he had an exciting fight with Tom Kong Watson. He won his last fight. And then on the the Abu Dhabi card last last week, he got a, a TKO. I mean, the, the yeah. middleweight division is just for some reason getting everybody hyped up, and so am I. So that's why the Brad Tavares fight, Yo Romero fight, is going to be exciting. The middleweight division just looks awesome. We'll talk about that matchup uh, soon enough. We're going to move on. That is the uh, review of this past Wednesday's Wednesday's uh, Na- Nations card. It was an awesome card. Uh, other news that hit today: Jake Shields, the striking god. Signs with the World Series of Fighting. Chris, your thoughts on this? I'm really happy for him. I mean, I'm glad that uh, someone was able to pick him up. I'm sure he's doing better things now, making better money. Uh, Paul Juarez versus Fitch is lined up. So if Berkman still isn't like complaining about how he wants to be released from his uh, contract, maybe Shields versus Berkman can be signed up. That'd be a good one. I mean, uh, Berkman has been complaining because he wants that title shot, which there's nothing wrong with that. But he's also been trying to get released, so who knows what the deal was. If he decides to stay, him versus Berkman would be a great fight. I would love to see it. Um, hmm. Jake Shields, Jake Shields like, versus Steve Carl is also a very big possibility when he come, when he he for his very first fight, just based on the fact that, he, uh, that Steve Carl... Uh, Prior to that loss to Parhara, has looked amazing, even as a, uh, even just as a uh, you know competitor with everybody. No matter who it was, uh, they may not be big names, but he looked decent against everybody that he fought. For you, for those that don't know about Steve Carl, prior to his loss to Husamar Parhara, was a very credible fighter, and that just shows you how decent Parhara is, is as a fighter. Um, but yeah, I mean. Coming off that horrible cut, I'm glad that he signed with the with the with the well known organization, an organization that's going to pay him well, um, and I'm glad that they uh, that they'll see past the kind of game that 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 he that is Jake Shields, the fight game that he comes into with. Uh, so uh, there's all kinds of good fights for him there. There's Steve Carl, Hector Lombard, or not Hector Lombard. I keep mixing Hector Lombard and Husamar Parhaza because they look so similar. 
but uh, Husamar Pajares, Josh Berkman. Um, hell, if he, well, I was saying this earlier, if he decided to move up back to middleweight, which is an option for him, then uh, what? Then he could fight um, Houston Okami again. I mean, those two have fought good. before. That would be good. I mean, uh, but that's all up to Jake Shields. I'm glad he's with another organization, a decent organization, one that's going to pay him well. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe gets up to that title. Maybe we'll see Jake Shields versus uh, Husmar Pahara someday. Even John Fitch. Think about that fight, too. Um, I mean, as far as grapplers go, it's an exciting fight to watch between two guys. Oh, people always joke about that, but I honest to God I think that'd be a good fight. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I, I'm not one that's, I mean, I don't like lay and pray. And Jake Shields sometimes does that. John Fitch sometimes does that. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just put thrashings on guys. And those are their exciting performances. I'm not saying that every fight that Fitch or Shields or Okami or any of these, or even Ben Askren has ever had, was a, was a boring fight because of the lay and pray. Because they don't always lay and pray. That's not what they do. Uh, Jake Shields always, uh, you know, not always, but he'll come into a fight. He looks for submissions. He'll look for finishes. He she, he could work on his ground and pound, and he could work on his stand up a little better. But he's an awesome fighter all around. Uh, there's a reason why he's uh, that he's got the record that he does. He's got the accomplishments that he does. Um, he's a great fighter, and sometimes he puts on exciting fights. Maybe not every time, but there are times where those guys put on great fights, and. Um, and and Dana White and some guys from the UFC wanna wanna justify these cuts just by them saying those guys are on the downslope on their uh, of their careers. One loss doesn't justify saying he's on the down on the downslide. It's the same goes for Fitch. One loss doesn't justify that. Same thing for Okami. One loss does not justify a guy going in onto the downslide of of uh, of their career. Yeah, to very credible guys too. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it it help, it's it's nothing but win win for the World Series of Fighting because they picked up all three of those guys, and those are all three uh, fighters that that when they're when they're put on, they have awesome fights. Like if you watch the last World Series of Fighting card that happened last month, Yushin Okami came in and he was just a world beater. I mean, uh, you may have expected him to beat the guy that he fought because maybe you hadn't heard of him, but he came in there and he just thrashed the guy, got the got the finish, and he, he looked amazing. And now he's going to fight again uh, sometime for the next World Series of Fighting show that will be in Japan, which uh, is good for him. Hopefully he headlines it and hopefully he makes a lot of money. I, I'm a big Yushin Okami fan as well. Uh, I'm not the biggest John Fitch fan, but I'm happy that he's there. And like I said, sometimes they put on great fights. I mean, the second to last fight Fitch had was the Eric Silva fight. And that fight won fight of the night. That was a great fight. And he won it. So it was really weird that they cut him just based off the Damian Maya fight. So They're I trying to justify it by saying it, it, it was, uh, he was asking for too much. And it was the Hendricks loss. That makes Fitch, sense. Damian Maya, oh, I'm sorry. Hendricks lost, Silva win, and then Demi and Maya lost. But the people who he lost to were well, that one guy's a champion. The other guy was was in the top five. Now he's at least still in the top ten. And the guy he beat is now going to headline a card, and is you know still in the top top fifteen easily. And he could he almost he was very close to finishing him. Had he had like an extra ten seconds in that round with the mount and the ground and pound, I think he could have finished him. Mm-hmm. And that fight was insane. I love that fight. That fight was awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, these guys put on great fights. I'm excited that he's in it. I'm uh, excited also Melvin Galar has been added. We talked about that. It's a great it's a great addition for everybody. Uh, the World Series of Fighting is looking more and more exciting by each signing. It seems that they get all the, all the guys that shouldn't be cut from the UFC. So, I mean, so... I mean, for people wanting to say that the World Series of Fighting is getting like the UFC's leftovers, I think they're getting the guys that um, that really, you know, th they were mainstays. Yushin Okami was with the UFC nine years. Melvin was there for eight years. Jake Shields was there uh, for what three years? But I mean, he was a big strike force stable, uh, big name. He was part of the biggest card ever in, in uh, UFC 129. So. Uh, people know these guys, and so it helps the World Series of Fighting exponentially. Um, and so I'm excited. We're going to move on now, too. We are going to review t today's fight card, UFC on Fox 11, for everybody that's watching tonight. Tonight, we will have the UFC on Fox 11 cards going down in Orlando, Georgia. Uh, Orlando, Florida. Sorry. <laughs> Man, 
This card is so fucking stacked. I mean, if you want to talk about as stacked as a free fight card could get, this is it right here, man. I mean, I still can't believe that Khabib versus uh, Rafael Dos Anjos is on the prelims. Yeah, I mean, people got beef with that, and ranking wise, it doesn't make sense, and, and it just kind of makes you think that they're just they putting, especially when you have uh, Donald Cerrone and Edson Barbosa, two guys that are ranked. Uh, lower than where Dos Anjos and and Magomedov are at, um, so it's it's weird. I mean, but uh, Dana White was on a on a on a, a, a UFC media scrum. Those things that he does quite often, and uh, he was um, explaining that. Uh, that the reason for that is so that Nurmagomedov can headline a car because the prelims will be on Fox Sports 1. Remember, fight fans, this is on uh, UFC on Fox. It will be on Fox uh, itself, not Fox Sports 1 or 2. It will be on Channel Fox. Um, so they, they wanted Khabib, to, uh, Khabib and Dos Anjos to headline that card. They treat the prelims like it's, an, like it's, its own kind of prestigious thing to be a, a headliner of a, of a of a prelim you know what i mean so that that was his justification for it which i mean agree with you if you want i still think that um that uh that it should have been the opening fight for the fox card just because i, I would feel better about Nurmaga madoff and dos Anjos being shown off on fox you know what i mean uh, Brad Tavares and Yoel Romero will be the, the 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 starting fight for the the Fox card, and 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 that's a great fight, and even that could headline the the Fox Sports one. So I, I just really didn't understand why. Uh, but other than that, I mean, uh, this is an awesome card. This is as badass as a card as you can get. We'll start it off from the prelims that will be aired on Fox Sports one. Jordan Mean versus Hermani Perpetuo. Which, if you don't know who Perpetuo is, he is a fighter coming off the tough uh, Brazil 2 um, season. Uh, the Brazilian has looked decent. He is more of a striking uh, practitioner than he is a jiu-jitsu guy, even though he claims to know jiu-jitsu. But when you're Brazilian, you just got to expect guys to know jiu-jitsu. So, Jordan Mean coming off a layoff uh, due to an injury. Had a decent year last year, went 1-1. One and one. Uh, looked very good against Jim Miller, and then uh, had an exciting, badass fight against uh, Matt Brown prior to that. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see Jordan Mean comes back. Come back. He's a young kid. Looks great. Uh, what do you think? Uh, just a correction. It was Dan Miller, not Jim. Dan. Miller. Dan Jim Miller. Miller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I see Jordan Mean um, winning this fight. I mean, he looked awesome against Matt Brown. He was. Very close to finishing him. Mm -hmm. So I see him becoming easily a top 15 fighter soon enough, which says a lot because the top 15 at welterweight is pretty damn stacked. stacked. Yeah, it's pretty stacked. <laughs> I mean, it's actually, it actually means something to say you're in the top 15 at welterweight mm -hmm. instead of it just being like one of those ones where they threw in more rankings just to put extra fighters yeah, in it. But like flyweight where, you mean. know, where there's just, uh, you know, they have like the division has like 18 guys and now you have top 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like with Flyway, it's like, it doesn't really mean that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that fight. I picked Jordan Mean strictly off of uh, Pepper Duo doesn't have the, really have have the kind of uh, style I think Mean brings to it. If you watch The Ultimate Fighter 2 Nations, I don't think you have, Chris, but... Um, no, I if, yeah, if, uh, I've seen him fight a couple times. He's, he's decent. He's more of a headhunter kind of dude. Because um, he's strong, short built, um, so that should be an exciting fight. I think Mean takes advantage of it using superior grappling, superior range. He'll probably be the taller fighter, so it should be an exciting fight. And we move on to middleweight: Kyle Magaish, Magaish, however you say it, versus uh, Luke Zakrich. I don't know who Luke Zakrich is. I'll say that right now. I don't know who all that guy. Is. <laughs> he might be making his debut. I don't know. Kyle Magaish has uh, fought, I think, a few times. Uh, uh, maybe two or three let's see Ooh. yeah he's fought three times uh he's gonna win over vemela and nick ring yeah those are two decent names i mean those are those are the those are the prelim names that you know of you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and nick ring has wins over some dudes as well he has wins over like uh court mcgee and uh, i think chris camozzi um carlos vemela a big strong dude who's even fought at heavyweight he submitted him 
Uh, he's he's definitely uh, and prior to that, all of his fights outside of the UFC, uh, other than other than one, have been finishes, and uh, by very decent submissions like Oma Plata's, and uh, he has uh, competed in jiu-jitsu. He's a very good jiu-jitsu practitioner, black belt, second degree, uh, at at 26 years of age. So it's de- that's very impressive on his part, and um, so it should be a decent match. I would probably go with Kyle Magaes just because you see more of him. Uh, he's got a lot of jiu-jitsu credentials, so it should be fun to watch. Next fight is that featherweight. Who would you pick, though, at, at between these two guys? Um, I have to go with Hellboy Magalish. Mm-hmm. Just in all honesty. Be a badass <laughs> nickname. Is that really his nickname? Yeah, Hellboy. Hellboy. That's a badass nickname. Yeah. That's, that's pretty dope. I'm going to go with his nicknames from now on. Esteban El Terrible Payan, <laughs> which means terrible. <laughs> the terrible. That's funny. Uh, that should be a decent fight. Estevan Payan versus who's he fighting here? Uh, oh shit! I lost the page. Estevan. Alex Payan. the Spartan White. The sport. The, the Spartan. The Spartan. Spartan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex the Spartan White. He better come in there with a good looking beard then. That's all I say. He looks pretty clean shaven. <laughs> oh. Fucker. I'm calling yourself no Spartan if you ain't got a beard to show off and shit. This will be Alex's debut. All right. Do you have any credentials on this guy? I don't. I uh, no. I, I know nothing about this guy. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, uh, Esteban Payan has looked surprisingly uh, decent fighting thus far, but he's on a two-fight losing streak thus uh, since entering the UFC. So he's definitely got uh, he's got a make-or-break fight here at this point, especially when it's a promotional newcomer. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so I mean, I mean, he lost his last fight by Robbie Peralta. <laughs> and he lost he his lost last his... fight by Robbie Peralta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to Robbie Peralta via KO. Yeah. So and to Jeremy Stevens, but there's really no, you know, slack in losing to Jeremy Stevens. Um, if I remember, so uh, definitely a make or break fight. You always want to see how guys do when the pressure's put on them. Uh, so. Should be an uh, interesting fight to watch at featherweight. The next mo- fight, lightweight, big fight. Georgia, Jorge Masvidal versus Pat Bam Bam Healy. Should be a good one, man. Those two guys know how to fight. If there's one, if, I mean, not, they're not bangers per se, but those guys put on fun, fun fights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, game bread, Mr. Uh, what's his name? Ha, <laughs> fuck. Jorge Masvidal, game bread. Uh, I, f- I see him winning it strictly because the guy just looks. Um, when he's put on, he knows how to put it on. And Pat Healy has just not looked like the Pat Healy that fought Jim Miller. You know what I mean? I don't know what happened, but yeah, he's gone on a two-fight losing skid. Um, the one against Nurmagomedov, I mean. It's Nurmagomedov. But uh, yeah. who else did he lose? He lost to Bobby Green. Yeah, and, which is a uh, fight, at least on paper, you would think he should win. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's we're not giving up Bobby Green enough credit, but uh, like I said, it just hasn't looked like Pat, like Pat Healy's been the Pat Healy of, say, his Strike Force days, because back in Strike Force, he was just, uh, you know, raining through everybody. Prior to that uh, fight with Khabib Nurmagomedov, he had had six straight wins, you know what I mean, and and, and hadn't lost, and, and his last loss prior to that was to Joss Thompson, which, you know, it's Joss Thompson, and, um, you know, he's just looked really good uh, since being at lightweight, uh, other than that, but to to have two losses on your hands right now, definitely put, especially when you have his first fight being a no contest, that's three unsuccessful fights in the UFC, and being the UFC, how scary it is now, you gotta think this is also a make or break fight for Pat Healy, um, Jorge Masvidal only has one loss right now in the UFC, and that's to Hustam Habilov, who will be met headlining a fight card with Benson Henderson, so not as much pressure on, on Masvidal as I would put on Healy, I want to see he, uh, Healy win, but I see Masvidal taking this one, maybe by late finish or uh, or decision. Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I want to see Healy win simply so he keeps his job. <laughs> uh, that Jim Miller fight, he looked great, and I mean, he tested positive for Ween, which in my mind, it's not like it's performance answer, but still, rules are rules, and the must have really fucking sucked to get. Ever. Like, huh? That was the most expensive drug pop ever. He lost a like he lost what, what did he lose? He lost his win bonus and two bonuses that amounted to one hundred. Like he lost his win bonus 
and his show win was thirty thirty, and the and the bonuses back then oh, was like one hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, man, that's so much money. Oh man, could you imagine just holding that money in your hands and then just boom, it's gone and just oh, oh that's just, terrible. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> I mean, now I really want him to win just because I feel bad, but. <laughs> But uh, Masvidal is no fucking joke, man. That dude knows how to put on good fights. He's definitely a tough son bitch because uh, what was it? Uh, his fight with Michael Chiesa, if anybody remembers it, was an oh, that amazing was, uh, that fight. Buzzer beater submission. Yeah. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. Um, Masvidal is a tough dude. That's definitely uh, that could out of the many fights that are on this card, that's a candidate. That's one of many that could be a candidate for a fight of the night right there. That's a great fight. Uh, but yeah, I have Masvidal winning late finish or TK or uh, decision. I'm then, seeing decision just because I think Pat Healy's tough enough to not get finished. Yeah, but Masvidal is a guy that looked great against Gilbert Melendez. Put on a great show against Chiesa after getting dropped and taken down multiple times. He was able to sub him. Um, this is a guy that I mean, he actually looked pretty good against Kabalov. Had he not got spinning heel kicked and dropped. I think he actually would have had a good case to possibly win that fight, but nonetheless, mm-hmm. he still lost. Yeah. But he's fucking overall, Russians, been man. Pretty good. He's fucking Russians, man, taking over. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like you mentioned earlier, I mean, I just still think it's very weird that Bendo, ranked number one, is going to be taking on Kapalov, ranked number 15. But everyone else is pretty much tied up, so what you got to do? My quick comment on that, and we were talking about it earlier, is that, you know, I just think it seems like the UFC would want to slow down any momentum Ben Henderson could get to, to, to bragging about, like, I should get another title shot. You know what I mean? Especially when he's lost twice to Anthony Pettis. That's my, that's really the only reason I see that fight being the way that, uh, being that fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Next fight on the card at welterweight, Tiago Alves, the pit bull, making his Making his comeback after his last fight was two years ago against That's Martin Kamen on a UFC uh, on a FX card back when FX that was, was the second still, UFC on FX. Yeah. yeah, back when FX was still showing shit. You know what I mean? That's how long ago yeah. it was. Um, I'm excited to see the pit bull come back. He's, he's always uh, been a fun fighter to watch. He will be coming back against uh, UFC mainstay Seth Bozinski. Seth, uh, you know, former middleweight, has come down to to welterweight, and ever since, uh, ever since then, he's looked. He's had times where he shows he that he can shine, and there are times where he just gets uh, he just gets put away. He's got a nineteen and ten record, but uh, he's definitely uh, not not a dude to mess with. He has great fights. He has a he has a few finishes. He's actually beaten Matt Brown. Um, that was probably back in the days where Matt Brown still had to figure everything out, but a win over Matt Brown on your record looks good on you. And uh, he's a great fighter, obviously. He's shown it. Uh, he won his last fight against Neil Magny. Um, definitely probably looking to come back and get as many fights as he can against big names. Tiago is a big name. Uh, I think this fight makes sense for Tiago, for him to come back after two years to take on a more or less a, just a mainstay kind of guy, I'll say that, for Seth Bozinski. Uh, makes sense, and I think it's a great fight uh, overall. Anyway, uh, I'm definitely excited to see Alves come back, and I, and I think uh, Alves has fixed everything that was ever wrong with him. He would always complain about injuries, but what Brazilian doesn't? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm excited to see him come back, and when he does, uh, I think I think uh, tomorrow or today, rather, he's gonna probably wreck it. I think he probably gets a second round, first round KO. What do you think? I'm going to go with the exact same thing, just because I feel the amount of time he's been off, he's just been, I mean, what was he, he was supposed to come back and then he got injured, so that obviously pissed him off because the torn chest. So I feel like he's just been doing nothing but working on what he needs to work on, refining his technique, working on the submission defense and everything, and um, Seth Bajinski has not been looking that great <laughs> um, as of late. So, I mean, holy shit, wait a minute. Seth Bazinski actually holds a win over Matt Brown. Oh, wait, does he hold a win over Matt Brown? Did you not listen to a word I said? I fucking said that. <laughs> I thought you said Tiago Alves had a win over Matt Brown. No, no, no. I was talk- all that shit I was talking about was about uh, Seth Bazinski. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Seth Bazinski has a win over Matt Brown. But then again, Matt Brown fucking just decided to go ape shit and get six wins in a row after that loss. So, since then, Bozinski has dropped two in a row. It's pretty much make it or break it for both fighters, really, but I gotta give it to Alves. I'm thinking 
gets it done fairly early in a typical Tiago Lewis fashion, which is a KO TKO. <laughs> All right. Move on to the next fight. The headliner, the debated fight, the fight I can't wait for. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Khabib the, versus Khabib the Eagle, Nurmagomedov. He's all about that Murka nowadays, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but, man, that's an awesome fight. I think uh, it's a, uh, a fun fight for Khabib. Uh, Khabib should probably win that. I see him winning uh, either by uh, by TKO, by getting it to the ground and putting the beat down on Dos Anjos. But I think Dos Anjos has decent enough jiu-jitsu and grappling sap, uh, uh, savviness to be able to avoid that. So I see Nurmagomedov getting this one by the, the decision, albeit I, f I figure this will be an exciting fight. I really do. do I think? see it being a very exciting fight. It's one that I've been really looking forward to for a while. Ever since the idea was thrown out there, I've been really looking forward to it. Um, I see Dos Anjos falling to uh, Nurmagomedov's strengths, which is the grinding, the throwing around. I mean, while it does take a lot of energy for Nurmagomedov, oh, another big thing is hopefully Nurmagomedov makes... Oh, wait, he did make weight, right? He made weight. Don't be worried. He's there. Okay. He made weight, so that's good. Um, I'm just... I'm, I see him running through him in the style that he does, which is the takedowns, the slams, the wild but very powerful strikes. The ground strikes are also very powerful, too. So I see Nurmagomedov. I don't see him subbing him at all. If he finishes him, he can possibly be, possibly be a TKO, but I'm seeing more so a UD. Yeah. That's basically what I agree. We agree. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for that fight. I think, uh, uh, like I said, it should have been on Fox, but if it's going to headline, if, if there is going to be a card that headlines a prelim card, it's definitely that one. Move yeah. on to the main card. Were you going to say something? Oh, uh, so yeah, that, that should definitely headline the prelims. <laughs> yes, Brad Tavares versus Yoel Romero will be the uh, the opening fight for the main card on Fox. Yoel Romero is has looked amazing as of late, uh, finishing all three of his UFC fights. He's an old dude. Surprisingly, he's thirty five, thirty six years old. Uh, yeah, turned uh, turned thirty six. And uh, I'm I'm surprised that uh, a guy like that started so late in his career, but he, here he is. Uh, um, and I think uh, he's looked amazing. He's beaten Derek Brunson, Harani Marks, and Clifford Starks, all by ta uh, all by amazing kinds of KOs. I mean, the Brunson fight was amazing simply because he had to come back. He was losing two rounds. The Ronnie Marks fight uh, was a back and forth fight, and then he found that right hand and just boom, put that dude down. And then the Clifford Starks mark knockout was a flying knee right to the face. It was beautifully just, placed, and Starks ran right into it. Yeah, and he jumped like he like jumped high. Like even though he hit him, he kept going up. Like <laughs> like he just went zoom, and then he just kept flying at a vertical angle towards the sun. It was hilarious. Um, but it was a great knockout. He's looked amazing um, at his age. It's surprising to see that you you would think the dude would be on TRT. Apparently, he's not. Uh, <laughs> And if his opponent will be, oh my goodness, Brad Tavares. The guy has looked amazing as well. He's one of those guys that, you know, j that's in the same boat as Dennis Bermudez, as I've said, uh, where he's winning all these fights and um, and he's just not getting the, the, the kind of, yeah, he's not getting the recognition. He's kind of getting it here. Maybe not in the opponent, but in the place placement of his fight. He's on a Fox card. I mean the main card of it, you know what I mean, and and yeah. uh, so he's opening up a Fox card. You get to he get the first uh, fight that everybody's gonna watch on one of the bigger cards that the UFC has had this year is gonna be all eyes on him. So I mean it's definitely gonna be surprising which Brad Tavares shows up. If he folds, then Yorel Romero wrecks him. And I see, and he's got five fights. Yeah, he's he's got seven fights, uh, seven wins in the UFC with only one loss being to Aaron Simpson. Um, since then, has looked great. Has beaten Tom Kong Watson, Bubba McDaniel, Lawrence Larkin. See, so these are like not the bigger, biggest names in in, in the box of uh, list of mid middleweights, especially when you look at how stacked middleweight is looking. But he's ranked now. Yoel's ranked now. It makes sense to make this fight, and I'm excited for it. I see this being a back and forth fight because Yoel tends to push it when um, um, when uh, he's in control. When he's not in control, he definitely. Uh, has to kind of find that center that 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 was definitely proved in the uh, uh, the Brunson fight where he was losing two rounds down. He had to push to to get that finish. 
Um, but when he's in control, that guy stalks you down, and he, he somehow manages to land a, a wicked strike on you. I see him being able to act. I actually see Yoel Romero getting this to the ground, using that wrestling that he's not shown too much of, but he's a, he's, he's a well-known uh, wrestling uh, uh, expert outside of the UFC prior to even making it here, but he's shown off such great hands. But this time he's fighting a guy who has very good hands, uh, Tavares knows how to strike, he knows how to hang in there, he's a tough dude, it's hard to put him away, but I see him taking him to the ground and getting either the TKO, but I find more likely he'll get the submission. Maybe round two. Huh. What do you got? Um, I'm with you on who I'm picking to win, but I oh, see him actually... Oh, wait, wait. Big, big, big statistic that he has on his hand is in freestyle wrestling, Yoel Romero, and only real, real wrestling fans, like of, of, you know, amateur wrestling will know this, he holds a win, he holds three wins over Kale Sanderson. And if you don't know who Kale Sanderson is, he's one of the legends of base, just basic wrestling, of, of Olympic wrestling, of championship wrestling, of freestyle wrestling. Kale Sanderson is one of the legends, and he holds three wins over him. That is insane. That's amazing. That is amazing. If you don't know who Kale Sanderson is, just look him up and look at the highlights that guy has. And if a guy like Romero can beat him in the wrestling department, you got to think, just goddamn, he's got some shit. It makes me think that we haven't seen the best of Yoel Romero yet, and that's why I'm picking him for this fight. Uh, I'm still picking Yoel Romero, but I think he actually finishes Tavares with strikes. He's been looking amazing as of late. I mean, when he turned it around on Brunson and he had his opportunity, he did not let it go. He just completely obliterated Brunson's side. It was disgusting. I mean, he, he I'm pretty <laughs> sure, what was it, his liver? It was just turning purple on the outside of his skin. Mm. He was hitting him that hard. and it, it was just, oh, it was vicious. Um, Yoel Romero, I see him finishing um, Tavares. He has amazing speed, explosion, and power for his age. His wrestling is great, too, so I don't see Tavares being able to get on the ground. Um, I just see everything that I just said, like his speed and explosion, just adding up to him for getting the win through his strikes. Uh, Tavares has been looking great, so this will be actually a really good notch on his record to get a win over him. After that, maybe we could be talking to a guy in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, geez, I'm looking at his his at Yoel's uh, his his wrestling credentials. He's got a silver medal in the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. He's an Olympic silver medalist. Why didn't I know that? What Why the aren't hell? they marketing that? As I, exactly. What the fuck? Really? He was yeah. He was a Olympic Games in two thousand for silver medal at eighty five kilograms, and then has won a gold in the nineteen ninety nine uh, wrestling world champions in Ankara, a silver medalist in the two thousand two wrestling world championships, as well as in two thousand five in Budapest silver medalist, and also won bronze in nineteen ninety eight and two thousand one in the world championships, and then the Pan American uh, wrestling games, a gold medalist in two thousand three and a bronze medalist in three and a bronze medalist in, in nineteen ninety nine Winnipeg. Those are st man. But man, just man, that guy has not shown off his grappling enough, and that might be because he's just that comfortable with his hands. Imagine, man, if if he, I mean, I just see him being able to take down anybody. Like I just don't see how he doesn't at this point. I'm looking at his stats, and it says throughout his UFC tenure, he's gone for six takedowns, but hasn't gotten any of them. That's insane. That's really weird. And saying, yeah, I know it's just during the Brunson fight. You can take actually, Kale Sanderson down. You just need to be throwing these fuckers around. That's really weird. I mean, that just shows you the, the line that's so different between regular wrestling and MMA. MMA wrestling. And that's, that's, that's why people need to give GSP more props because, I mean, he figured out MMA wrestling. He didn't figure out regular wrestling. He figured out MMA wrestling, controlling yeah. and punches and elbows and ground and pound and grappling and incorporated it all together. And, and uh, so, man, it's just in, it's interesting to see these records and, and wonder why he doesn't really try and mesh his game up to, to fit better for MMA wrestling. You know what I mean? But uh, he's yeah, obviously got defense. Yeah, he's obviously got he's obviously got great hands. And you're mentioning his defense for wrestling? Yeah, I mean it's amazing. I actually noticed that during the Brunson fight. You see, they talked about his like background, but he was getting taken down by Brunson a few times. I'm looking at his takedown defense stat and uh, he's actually only stopped about fifty five percent, which is a little odd. <sighs> Imposter that's what he is. <laughs> it's funny. He's got weird stats that just don't back up his accomplishments. But 
You know, I mean, he is an older guy in this game. Who knows? Maybe his wrestling has diminished. I don't know. But as a fighter, he's looked incredible. He's looked amazing. And so this should be an amazing startup fight for the uh, for the UFC on Fox card. We'll move on to the next card. Oh, my God! Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Edson Barboza. If you don't already know, this fight is the most I am excited for. This fight. <laughs> Holy shit. This fight is going to be sick. But you know what now I'm so scared of, as I said in the last podcast, that someone's going to break someone's leg off a leg kick, I swear. <laughs> these guys throw leg kicks, man. Not only do they throw it, they throw it to hurt you. And, I mean, these guys are, are, are great kickboxers. Uh, Donald Cerrone's proven to have a sick-ass ground game. Um, Edson Barboza's proven he's tough as all fuck. Uh, surviving that fight with uh, Danny Castillo. And, uh, and and it's just looked great in all of his other fights, finishing his last few fights by uh, by leg kicks. I mean, just man, this all together the the, the with all the offensive and uh, uh, credentials that these guys have put into all their wins, it's just such an amazing fucking fight. And man, I, I really don't know who to pick. I really don't. I fucking I I'm not gonna make a pick for this fight. I just can't. I really think that it's just gonna be a sick ass fight. It wins fight of the night, and whoever wins should probably win performance of the night. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Donald Cerrone. I'm just scared to see which Donald Cerrone shows up to this fight. Yeah. That's going to be a big thing behind it, is what kind of mentality is he going to have coming into this fight? Yeah, I mean, um, when Edson comes I, to fight, he always comes to fight. Even against the Jamie Varner, even in the Jamie Varner fight, he showed up to fight. It's just uh, Jamie Varner was just coming out like a man possessed. You know what I mean? That's something different. Yeah. There. there have been times Donald shows up and he just doesn't show up. It's really weird. Um, so yeah, he yeah, just seizes. You saw that in the Pettis fight. He looked like his body was just seized. In the Dos Anjos <laughs> fight, he just didn't look like he was there. The Diaz fight, when he was getting boxed up, he just seemed like he was he was seized. They're very odd. So it all depends on what kind of Cerrone comes out. Um, I, I think he should be able to beat Barboza. In all honesty, I would actually... I would think that he can finish him on the ground more comfortably than he could finish him standing. Agreed. Man, if if you're not amped up for that fight, you're out of your fucking mind. That's the best fight on the card for me thus far. I'm excited for it. I'm a fan of both guys, Cerrone more so than Barboza, and yet at the same time, I'm kind of leaning toward Barboza. He's he's out of tensions. He has when he show he always shows up. You never know with Donald, so there's more of a chance. I feel Edson comes in and he and he somehow f uh, f figures out a way to put in the finish. But he's got to be careful because Cerrone has proven that his ground game's no fucking joke. You don't see most of Barboza's uh, finishes, or I mean, uh, grappling. So it's very, uh, it's very questionable what happens when this fight hits the ground. So, uh, um, but either way, strike standing on the ground, I can't see this fight being boring in any way whatsoever, unless Cerrone just comes up looking stale, like not knowing what to do in there. Um, but uh, he tends to show up. He he says he wants to fight a bunch of times this year. You got to win to be able to stay healthy to do that. So I hope he wins. Uh, next fight here on the card: women's bantamweight. Misha take down Tate versus Liz Gorilla Cartmunch, as you like to say it. <laughs> Carmouche. I'm excited for this fight as well. It's uh, it's definitely a do or die fight for both women. You never know what the repercussions could be for losing that fight because both women. Coming off a loss, Misha Tate doesn't even have a win in the UFC yet, and uh, Liz uh, hasn't won. Uh, what did she? She lost her last fight coming off against. Alexis but she beat Tate. Andrade. That was the one win she has. Yeah, yeah. and she's uh, her last fight. She came off in losing effort to new number one contender uh, Alexis Davis. So it's a very interesting fight. I think uh, I, I I like how this fight looks. It's definitely a very good style wise matchup for for both women uh they're both very highly ranked in their in the women's bantamweight division so it, it, ranking wise it makes sense for these two to uh, get fighting again misha tate i lean more towards her just because i know that she's been training in las vegas for this fight she's been training uh with uh randy couture uh to get more of a wrestling based style of fighting back to uh into her as well as she needs to kind of learn how to not get thrown around and shit when she goes in for a takedown <laughs> Uh, Liz Carmouche, uh, kind of kept to the same regimen that she's always done for every fight, so, but, um, I don't know, I'm leaning more toward Tate, I, I'm excited for this fight, I, I gotta say, I don't, uh, women never really ever tend to put on boring fights, and Misha especially, so I'm excited for this fight, I think Misha takes it by, uh, decision. 
Um, I agree so too. I don't see Tate being able to finish Carmouche, but I do see her being Carmouche. And it's actually amazing to me that Tate doesn't have a win in the UFC yet, which is a very scary thing. I mean, do I think she'll get cut if she loses? No, because she's the second most popular woman they have in the UFC. Yeah. So even if she goes 0 3, she might get I don't the Frank Mir treatment. Where, yeah, she could get the Frank Mir treatment where even if she loses this fight, she could lose the next fight and she'll still probably be signed. Um, oh, yeah. yeah I but, mean, this one, this isn't even a gimme fight either. This is a very hard fight for. Yeah, which I mean. I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Liz, is, Liz is top ranked for a reason. She's, she's uh, outside of every fight. I mean, other than with top contenders such as Ronda Rousey and, and Alexis Davis, she's looked great. Uh, even in, even when she was fighting for Invicta. So, it's, um, it's definitely going to be an exciting fight. I lean toward Tate. This fight also. Um, has the it apparently has the closest margin betting wise uh it's it's very close it's not even two to one it's like one point something to one uh it's very close so you, that just shows you how hard it is to call that fight uh it, that's my that's the way i feel about the Cerrone barboza fight that's how close it is for me um we now move on um we now move on to the heavyweight fight. Travis Brown versus Fabricio Verdum. Winner gets Kane. Ooh. Kane and probably the coaching slot of the Ultimate Fighter his, uh, Latinos. Or however, like whatever they're going to call it. Mexico. Oh, sure. No, it's not going to be. It's like it has like every, like a lot of Hispanic uh, countries can participate, including my own, which is pretty dope. Um, yeah. I'm excited for this fight only because I just think Brown takes it. I, I think Brown finally solidifies his, his stake to the title fight claim here. And uh, I think Brown is the one guy that can challenge Kane really well. On the ground, who knows? Because we've never seen Brown on the ground. That's the thing. We don't, we don't, I mean, he submitted one guy who's no longer even with the UFC anymore. Yeah, Grits. Is that what his name was? Yeah. Um,. Other than that, he's never looked like a world beater on the ground. He doesn't. I mean, you've never really seen it. Um, standing up, though, that guy has always looked amazing. I mean, you look at the Stefan Struve knockout, the Alistair Overeem knockout. You know, I mean, that guy stands with you and he puts it puts it to you. He's won some great fights, and um, I think uh, striking wise, he holds the edge here barely because Verdum has looked very improved standing up as well. And Verdum's always a fucking uh, a, a scary, scary story when you take him to the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like as I said before, I I think Brown Brown's time is now. That if there was ever a time for a guy to come up and earn a title shot, it's right now. And Brown just has that feeling to him where you just feel like now's his time. And and to fight for the title. And uh, so I I'm excited for it. I think uh, I think he he wins that fight. And probably finishes it. This is a five round fight, so I think he finishes it in the second or third round. Bye, um, strikes. I completely agree. I see Brown being able to finish for Doom by KO, which says a lot because I believe his only KO loss is to JDS, right? For Doom? Yeah. Is it now? I think he's has I another believe one. so. Yeah. Let's see. We'll look at the old record. But going off that, um,. Verdum is definitely gonna watch the way he takes Travis yeah. Brown down it's his because finish. there's no secret that the like he wants to take Brown down to simply get him down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Now you see Travis Brown make people pay when they try to take him down. He just elbows the shit out of the side of their head, <laughs> obliterates them. Yeah. Um, standing while Verdum has looked improved, Travis Brown's just still looking amazing standing up. Plus he's got the reach, the power. As long as he doesn't go for a lot of fancy shit and pulls his leg again, he should be just fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, man. If you're not excited about this fight card, go fuck yourself. This is an awesome fight card. This is, uh, I can't wait. Every fight I'm nearly excited for, even the ones uh, with the newcomers on there, just because of the other uh, the other uh, side of them. I, I find it hard that some of these guys are going to have a hard time putting on a boring fight. Um. I love this card. I can't wait. I think it, it could win event of the year by the end of this year, possibly. For those of you participating on the MMA Discussion uh, Wrestling Tournament, thank you guys. Your votes have been uh, very much appreciated. Today is the last day of the quarterfinals, which is George St. Pierre versus Mark the Hammer Coleman. Go put your votes in. It's uh, definite, or I'm glad you guys put your votes in. I'm sorry. The, the votes have now closed. I forget. This is a pre-recorded thing. <laughs> but, man... 
Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing this tournament, and with this, we will have our final four uh, come Monday. The, the tournament will actually be done by the end of next week. We will have our winner. Uh, for those of you that actually know, uh, you'll find out who the final four are on Monday. You will see the next matchup for one side. On Tuesday will be the, the other side of that uh, the semifinals. And then I will put the votes together. And the final two will f uh, f commence on Thursday of next week. That should be awesome and fun. And I will also be putting up a post telling, asking you fans, which tournament do you want to see? Do you want to see the best striker in, in of all of MMA? Do you want to see the best grappler, jiu-jitsu practitioner? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. So some, some, excited, uh, some exciting to look forward to if you guys have enjoyed the, the, the uh, tournament uh, format. If, if so, please give me some feedback. Let me know what you think of it. Um, Chris, give me your prediction. Who do you think wins that entire tournament that I put together? Um, I'm thinking it's going to come down to Chael versus GSP, and I would love to see Chael win, but GSP is going to take it. <laughs> uh, George St. Pierre, I mean, we, are, our, our top eight have all, all have, uh, great credentials on their side, um, and, and all together, looking at the final four, I'm, ex I'm, I'm, I, I would be happy with any, any, any either of these four winning it. Like, uh, I, I'm actually happy that the fans picked with these guys. Um, uh, so I'm excited for it, and, and I think that you fans did a great job with your voting. Um, and I know that the, 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 <laughs> the rules and the criteria and, and, and everything, everybody argued about it. But just know that there was never really any wrong or right answer unless you just knew that your argument was stupid. Like, and for some that were just trolling, like well, somebody voted for Brock because he beat the Undertaker at WrestleMania, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. You know, what I mean, you just gotta know someone's fucking around. I mean, unless you think that's a serious reason to vote for him, then you know you're being stupid, or someone should tell you that you are. But uh, <laughs> but you guys, I feel like you guys voted correctly. I feel like you guys uh, did a great job in this tournament. Um, I had fun doing it, and I, and I plan on doing it for many other t subtypes of fighting. Because uh, it's fun to do this because one of the things I liked about it was being able to, um, you know, really dig at these guys' career. I actually found out some things about some of these fighters that I never knew. I never knew Coleman competed in the 92 Olympics. I never knew uh, some of the collegiate uh, accomplishments of some of these guys, such as, uh, as Kane, even though I knew he was an NCAA champ. I never knew some of the, the things that this guy did. Like such as his record or, or stuff like that, as far, as well as John Jones. I didn't know any. I didn't know some of the wrestling accomplishments that guy had. Had a few Jocko uh, wrestling championships uh, to his name, and you know, it's been fun. And I had a lot of fun doing it. And now that we have the final four in, I'm excited to 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 finish out this tournament that has taken about a good half a month to finish. Um, and I like how it went down. So that, that's why I'm excited to do another one because I know you guys can vote correctly. <laughs> that was the biggest scare for all our admins. They thought, oh, our fans are going to be stupid. And, you know. <laughs> Talking shit like we always do. But we love you guys. And uh, go watch UFC on Fox. We'll be going down on Fox Sports 1 as well as having four fights on the UFC Fight Pass. If you have the Fight Pass, go watch the fights because you can never get enough fights. At least I can. I'm excited. Chris, thanks for coming on, brother. We appreciate As you. Always. Yes. Always. In the next podcast, we will actually be answering fan questions. So if you have any other questions, message them. Message me. I know some of you have my uh, my Facebook all of a sudden, so go ahead and message me. I don't care. If you have any questions you want to ask on the uh, MMA Discussion Podcast, please feel free to uh, ask away. Chris, signing off, brother. All right. See you guys next podcast. Deuces.